Look at, look at, look at, look, look, first snow of the year. Kitten, look, snow. You've never seen, you want to see the snow? Uh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's snowing. Kitten, look, look, kitten. What is all that stinky? What is all that? What's happening? Got white floofs falling from the sky. <laughs> Little tails twitching. What's that about? You see the snow? You see the snow? Oh, you're looking at the ground. You're looking for birds, aren't you? You don't care about the snow. Maybe she cares about the snow. I'm not sure. Um, I should probably bring in the Bismarck poem. Only oh, so soft and floofy. I would imagine it's probably not going to be happy about this, even though it's not sticking. It's not supposed to stick. It's ground is still very warm, <laughs> luckily, because I still have a lot of bulbs to plant. Made a big dent, but there's still a lot to go. No plan for this week. Just uh, probably going to get some work done in the grow space. <laughs> Maybe dig up the Chinese fan palm. It's also one that's not going to be a very big fan of the snow. But the mules, the windmill palm, they should be fine. Because the low is only some... Oh my god, that's magical. <laughs> it is so pretty. The low is, I think, like 33 or something. So I'm not worried about the snow on the plants outside. Have to keep an eye on the crowns of the palms for ice. But otherwise, this is just beautiful. It's so pretty. This is beautiful. Let me turn my let me get to turn this lamp off so you can actually see it through the. Oh, it's so pretty. I can't wait to see how it sticks. Hopefually, it sticks. It probably won't. But no, I actually think it might to the spruce. That spruce tree is so pretty when it gets snow on it. I can't even tell you how happy and excited I am right now. Even though there's still, you can still see there's some bulbs on the table. That's all that's left. But uh, it's about 700 of them. Um, excuse you! That was an alarming interruption. I think that that was because of the drawstring on my pants. <laughs> that could have been really bad. <laughs> it's not for you. Don't play with that area. It's not okay. Look at it's, it's, oh, it's so nice. Get in! <laughs> Nice, big, fat flakes, too. It's not the little kind that you can barely see. Like, look at those things. They're big, chunky snowflakes. That's what I like to see. They predicted snow. I didn't believe them because it's St. Louis. They're usually wrong about snow forecasts. Just a couple of days too late. Could have had a white Christmas. I think it was like 61 on Christmas. Christmas Eve, it was like 67. I was running around outside with shorts and a hoodie on most of the day doing yard work. It was a great Christmas Eve. That's all. I don't know what the rest of the video is going to be like, but I wanted to make sure everybody got to see the snow. A lot of you live in places where it snows a lot, so this is not very exciting to you, but we don't get a ton, so I get very excited when I get to see the snow. Especially because last year we got snow, but it was mostly at night time, so you never got to sit back and just relax inside and watch the snow. It's in, do you mind if I come through here? Knocking your toys all over the place. I gotta get through here. I bet Turbo will be happy. Turbo used to love the snow. What you doing, Floof? What you doing, Floof? You're making it distracting trying to get downstairs. Yes, you are. Turbo! There he is. Hey, <laughs> baby. What's going on outside? Want to see the snow? Want to see the snow? What is that? No, it's not that exciting. Okay. His first snow, he stood outside and he ran around and tried to eat the snowflakes. Still fun and exciting. Uh, yeah, I don't think the Chinese fan palm is going to like the snow. And then the Bismarckia, which is still outside. I think I should probably bring that in. And then, I don't know, we're going to pick up doing something. I don't know. I, haven't, I wasn't ready to start vlogging, but I wanted to show the snow, so here we are. I don't even know where to start out here. There's so many just little things that need to be done. Like, by looking at this phasophyllum here. It could use some fertilizer. It's got weird growth on it. It always has had odd growth on it. The, sen not sensation, domino, the sensation is next to it. It's always had this weird, like, crippled, cri not crippled, crimpled up foliage. You see how the leaves are just odd? And I don't know if that's normal. The ones I see at the stores don't look like this one, but I've had it for two years and that's, uh, no, three years. This is how it's always looked, so I, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with it. I would speculate maybe it's a virus, but if it is, it's not a very contagious one because it's been floating around in the same water that I used to water every single plant that's out here. And again, it has for three years, so I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe some fertilizer tablets that might help. I don't know. I actually, I kind of like the stiff foliage 
that it has, sorry, foliage for the pronunciation geeks out there. It's like a nice stiff, somewhat cupped leaf when they come out of the middle. It looks kind of cool, different from a lot of spathophyllums, but it also just looks kind of sickly, if that makes any sense. It should make sense. I, there's no other way to describe it. It looks odd. This just isn't how they're supposed to look. The sensation, I need to be very careful holding my camera over the water like this. That got put in here a few weeks ago. It was in a video and it's doing really well in here. And the variegation is starting to come back much stronger since I moved it in here. If you don't remember, this was growing in the back of one of my fish tanks in a tiny little bitty pot. And it was time to upgrade it to something much larger. And the variegation had really started to go away on it. And the whole point of this plant was it's supposed to be a nice big variegated spathophyllum. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe I got a lemon, maybe it reverts. I don't know. It's not a variegated plant that's been around all that long. It's pretty new to the market, but very popular. I think we'll be seeing these a lot in the next few years, more than likely. Because even the variegated ones, they're all over the place. It's not a hard plant to get a hold of, but I haven't seen a lot as far as people reporting them losing their variegation and whether or not it's stable. I just think it was getting way too much light. I had a little ring light, a plant grow light that was, I mean, it was as far away as I could put it, but it was still basically right over the top of the plant and that was causing some, I guess the plant to be like, oh, we need to put up all the chlorophyll <laughs> variations not going to work here. And so I speculated that maybe if I moved it out here, one better environment, lots more space to grow in that larger floating container there that would be better for the plant. It had to be upgraded to new pot no matter what, but also further distance from the grow lights. They're pretty far up there. Maybe it would start putting out more variegation. And it looks like it has the two new leaves, two newest leaves on there. They've got some nice color on them. It's a yellow variegation. I'm not really a fan of yellow variegation, but overall the sensation, spathophyllum, it's a type of peace lily if you don't know what I'm talking about. Spathophyllums are peace lilies. The sensation is one that gets huge and they have really big, fun, paddle-like foliage on them as opposed to some of the other <laughs> variegated spathophyllums that, well, you know, there are a lot of neat spathophyllums out there. I have been on a spathophyllum kick in my brain. I haven't gone out and bought them, <laughs> just the one. But in my mind, I'm just like, oh, I want one of these and I want one of those. And I was thinking about placing an order to get some, and then I remembered that there's a great nursery. It's kind of, it's like 40 minutes away, so it's not that far, but in my mind, it's really far away. But I'm thinking sometime in the next few weeks, it might be fun to go down to a place called Plant Haven, film there before. They have a great selection of plants. It's one of the few places that's open here during the winter that sells plants. And it wouldn't surprise me if they probably have some neat spathophyllums. They usually have a good selection of plants that aren't all that common to find in nurseries. Things usually have to order online. Last winter when I was there, they had lots of aeroids that weren't really big on the market yet. They're getting there. You know, we're starting to see the Bellates and the Goriosums and a lot of Crystallinums and several others out at the nurseries, more so local nurseries than big box stores. But if they had all those before I was seeing them at the other nurseries, then maybe they'll have some of the neat spathophyllums. I don't know, just a thought. Just thinking out loud here. Wasn't really a point to much of this other than look at how weird my domino looks. It's a weird one. It's cool, but it just always looks sick because of the ruffled texture to the foliage. Also, I haven't seen a lot of them that are quite this big. This one's over two feet tall. It's gotten very large over the last few years, so maybe it's just that comes with size. But I feel like it's been this weird wonky shape for basically as long as I've had it, except for when I brought it home from the nursery. It just looked like a normal spathophyllum with the speckly white stuff on the leaves. Anyways, I, but I need to water. That's what I'm doing right now. Plants need water. Just a light drink for a lot of them because it's not all that warm in here. Things are still dry enough because the heater's running essentially non-stop that I thought it would be a good idea to turn the hose on and give things a drink. This coconut palm, uh, and do I need to? I, you know that that's not what they're supposed to look like, right? Here's a healthy coconut palm. 
and there's this coconut palm. Don't know exactly what happened to it. I have several ideas. That one specifically I had over here in front of that white garage door and uh, for like a week or so, there, there's a hole up there in the ceiling that goes to the attic. That hole was open to get Christmas decorations out. And it was sitting underneath that hole and it wasn't terribly cold, but like when you would walk underneath there, you could feel the cold air rushing down. So I think that that probably had something to do with it. You know, just a week with 40 degree air blowing on it. That's really all it would take. So I moved it up here onto the shelf where we get blasted with heat and uh, we're just gonna have to really stay on top of some TLC with it. If I can get this leaf right here, that frond that's ready to open up, if I can get that one to push out and open up, probably in the clear, not really in the clear until you start to see another growth start to pop up from the middle. But uh, I don't know, I've seen coconut palms look like this before and it's not usually a good sign. I don't, I don't think good things are gonna be happening to it. Moved it, it's closer to the lights. It's gonna get much more warmth right there. It's a very, very, very warm spot. That's basically all I can do. And then hit it with fertilizer. I put some slow release in there, but I should probably hit it with a pretty strong liquid nitrogen, for, not liquid nitrogen, a fertilizer high in nitrogen for it to help it go ahead and push that new foliage out and get it going again. These things happen. Went ahead and pushed the hose down there into the water so maybe things won't be quite as noisy. Sorry about that. Some people enjoy the sound of the water. Some people find it really annoying. Uh, to each their own. I usually find it relaxing, but coming through the audio, I almost just tripped and fell. That's what that noise was. Through the microphones, different story. Uh, this is uh, bananas out of control. Got to do something about this. Oh, what exactly am I going to do about it? I just, I'm just going to cut it back. It's too big. It doesn't fit on these shelves anymore. And this is a variety that stays very small. Doesn't need a lot of trunk on it to trunk pseudo stem on it to produce an inflorescence. If you don't know what I'm talking about, bananas usually need a certain amount of their pseudo stem, which is what a trunk is on a banana. It's a pseudo stem. It's not actually a trunk. It's a series of leaves. So what looks like a trunk is actually the bases of the foliage it goes all the way down to the ground. And that's why it's called a pseudo stem. But with bananas, typically you need to maintain a certain percentage, depending on the type of banana, of that pseudo stem in order for them to produce an inflorescence and give you a nice show, a fun set of bananas. This is a super dwarf. I think it's a little prince, but I'm not positive. Had this one for a couple of years now. It's been an absolute trooper. And generally in the winter time, this is only the second winter I've had this one, but just speaking with bananas in general, usually they need a pretty good cleanup in the winter. And that's where we are now. This has been inside for a while now. This has been inside since October. So it's definitely overdue for a cleanup. Try and get all these old leaf bases out of there. I only do this because of the pest problems that I've had out here over the years. The less dead decaying matter that there is, <laughs> the less issues I may have to deal with. Really, it's just about eliminating a lot of hiding spots for things or areas that would be harder to spray and get into with neem mealybugs and things. They really know their way around a plant. They are so good at getting down into the crevices and it can be difficult to eliminate them because of that. Well, and because mealybugs have become pretty resistant to most pesticides, so they're tricky to get rid of because of that. Not resistant to neem though, but you gotta really stay on top of it. I think I should probably make a cut right around here, about halfway through. I need to, I don't, what am I gonna do that with? Okay, not the cleanest cut because I didn't have a tool long enough out here to go all the way through it, but it's fine, it'll do. Gonna get lots of new growth to pop out of that middle there. All these outer layers are going to brown and have to be removed over the months, which is fine. That has opened up some light in here. Things were just too shaded. Morganianum's not getting enough, so move that down there. This over here is a disso cactus and it needs a new container. I'm gonna move that to my desk so I can remember to get on top of that. I need to order something for it. I think everything else over here is okay. There's more pruning I could do back there on that heliconia, but this is th the main thing was opening things up to get more light in here, because that banana, it was just, it was too much. I said the banana shelf was looking pretty good. I think that this Musa Nono could use some TLC. It's looking sad. I don't want to wait and 
let that get any worse. Let me get my lights on. You might want to be able to see what I'm doing, right? There we go, that's better. It's in a six inch pot. One of these right here. I'm just gonna, it's a small bump up, not a huge upgrade. This isn't the time of year for a huge upgrade. I try and keep things warm out here, but not necessarily actively growing banana warm. It's just kind of like keep them trotting along warm. Kind of, where's my soil? I'm gonna need soil for this. I don't necessarily like to play favorites, but for the no-no banana, I am gonna go with the ocean forest. It's more pricey, so I don't use it all that often. It is really good stuff, and I only want the best for this banana. And that's also partially because this just is not necessarily the right time of year for repotting one of these guys. Ocean forest with all the good stuff in it, drains really well good amount of organics in there. It's got some sand and some grit to it, which I talk about a lot. It's nice looking stuff. Good soil. That shelf over there that we were just at, that was just watered a couple of days ago. So I'm not worried about the banana needing water. This uh, it looks pretty good. It's a nice looking root system. Would have thought would have seen more going on with the roots by now, but it's okay. It's pretty good. And I feel like the ocean forest, as far as moisture holding capacity goes, should be pretty comparable to what this banana was already in, I think. Hopefully, can't say for sure. Go ahead and get that back filled. Not a very big back fill, so it's gonna be one of those ones where I have to very tediously poke the soil down into the cracks, but I think that's okay. I really, I don't know. I thought about just bumping this straight up into a 10 inch container because it's a banana that grows pretty well. Similar to a Zebrina, a Rojo, something like that, but it's just not the time of year for this. And the time of year is probably okay just because they're under artificial lighting. Things do stay fairly warm in here, but there are days, you know, when it drops into the teens outside and uh, that makes it harder to keep things very warm out here. It's still probably in the upper 60s, low 70s, but bananas like 77 and up is the sweet spot to get growth out of them. Otherwise, they just kind of hang out and chill. This has been a sturdy one, though. I've had it since it was just a teeny tiny little, it was just a few little leaves from tissue culture. And it would probably be much bigger than this by now had I repotted it. One of the like 50 times I brought it up during garden tours last summer, but I, yeah, I just forgot. Better late than never. I'm gonna top that off just because I assume when I water this in, it's probably gonna burp out whole bunch of soil. I might even top dress this. I don't think I need to. Don't think it necessarily needs to be top dressed. It really is just going to depend on the soil. We have to wait and see how well it holds in moisture because the air, I mean, keeps the humidity up as much as I can out here, but it does get fairly dry if the heater is running a lot. And that's pretty much only an issue in like mid January into mid February. Is that, can you see it? I wondered about that. You see what's going on in there? It's that time of year, it's spider mite season. It makes sense. The banana has been growing and then it's older foliage just withering away for seemingly no reason at all because it's still pushing out growth. So now I, I get it now. See the spider mites as well over there on the shelves. And that's the thing with bananas with those leaves, how they hang over. I've been spraying monthly. I'm not doing the beneficial predator thing this year. Thousands of dollars into it last year. Had no luck with it. So this year, systemic sprays, neem max, pretty good stuff, and systemic granules and for fungus gnats and fruit flies. That's what I've been using for years. Stuff works great. It's just a uh, powdered Bacillus thuringiensis. You just mix it with some water, water into the plants, and boom, fungus gnats are gone. The nice thing about the systemic spray is that it kills on contact. It leaves behind a residue, so it helps kill for a while after that, and it's systemic to an extent. I haven't, I mean, I'm clearly, because I've been using it and the, they're here. So how systemic is it? I don't know. But it's more than likely systemic enough to get these guys taken care of. I don't know if that didn't make any sense. I may as well just not said anything at all just then. Yeah, with the foliage that has that much on it, I prefer to try and catch the mites as I'm cutting it, as I'm messing with the leaves. Help contain them, keep them from falling, and being able to just spread around and go all over the place. Probably not necessary, more for peace of mind, but I figure, why not? There we go, that tied up. Contain the critters, they can't spread around. And then options here are to grab a neem mixture, soap mixture, something of the sort, and just saturate what's left on there. I'm just gonna take it inside to the sink and rinse it off really, really well. 
and then make sure to get the systemic applied and have to remember that when I'm spraying for the spider mites, I'm doing that monthly to flip the plant and get the undersides of the leaves. I'm pretty much guaranteed that that's what happened there. Haven't seen signs on them on anything else, but I'm sure if they were that heavy on one plant, they're probably on more. So we just we get to do this again. It's going to be last winter 2.0, except this time a whole different arsenal of things going on here. I also <laughs> should have mentioned this. I've added some systemic granules into the top here and I'm going to water those in, give that a soak so that it can do its thing. I don't, there are lots of different types of systemic granules. The ones from Bonide, pretty good. And then there's the Bayer. They make one that's pretty good, the BioAdvance Protectin Feed for more like boring insects. I've had really good luck with that. Not insects that are like not entertaining, insects that chew into the trunks of the, you probably knew what I meant. Look what I found. I knew I had to have a hanging basket around here that I could use with all the annuals and things I plant up during the growing season. There's no way that I didn't have something that I could move that deso cactus into. I forgot I need to do the part where I actually water the granules into there. This is a, I don't know, it's not a huge upgrade, upgrade, upgrade to the pot that this is already in, but I'd say it's plenty big enough. This is not a plant that needs a, a huge setup for its roots. So I'd say it'll do okay. As far as the potting mixture goes, this cactus has been in that same blend for like, I don't even know, probably five years. This is long overdue, as you can see from looking at it. I'm thinking I'm probably going to use this, blend. see if I can get it into frame here. I need a bigger desk. Can you see it? This is a blend that I use when planting up an Aeonium and uh, just lots of cactus and succulents. It's a basic potting blend, just all purpose potting swell that I've added some grit to. So there's some planted aquarium gravel. It doesn't need to be planted aquarium gravel. I just happen to have a bunch of that laying around that I couldn't use in my tank. So I thought I would blend it in with this mixture, there's some bark, some perlite. It's just a nice, well-draining, airy mix. However, <laughs> looks great giant tub next to the cactus. The Disso cactus, it's a tropical cactus, but still an epithetic one. Being an epiphyte, that does mean that its soil blend needs to drain very, very well. But it being a tropical one means that it does need some moisture retention because they're from areas where they get a good amount of precipitation. So because I have the bag sitting right next to me, I'm going to throw some of that ocean forest in there. Be like two, three scoops? Yeah, three scoops. That should do it. The reason is this is just a hot mess. I need a bigger desk out here. Oh, I don't, you get it. I don't have to show you me blending up soil. The Disso cactus are ones that can take a higher moisture holding capacity. That's all I was getting at from the beginning and then somehow ended up just getting lost with the fact that I don't have a tall enough tripod and my desk isn't big enough to film something like this right now. Something to be aware of. This pot, can you... <laughs> the drainage hole, it's indented. It's up higher so that water will hold itself down low inside of the container. That is not good for a cactus, but my drill is dead because I've been planting bulbs left and right. When the batteries recharge, I'll come and just pop a little hole, probably here, 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 and you know, all around. Just enough that water can't sit down in there because that will be a problem. I do not think that the plant would appreciate all that going on. See, the problem isn't that the tripod can't go taller. This tripod goes pretty tall. It's that there's not a lot of floor space to set it back down. The higher the tripod, the more room that it's going to take up on the ground because those legs spread out. They spread out a lot. You keep... Yeah, so you can see here, that is a very airy blend. <laughs> it's typical, kind of like what you'd see with an aeroid, which is what I was thinking this would probably need is basically an aeroid blend. No, what I'm moving it into is not an aeroid blend, but it's aeroid blend-ish. Airy and well-draining, that's the keys. Airy, well-draining, and we'll hold on to some moisture. Doesn't need to hold on to very much moisture, but I would like for it to hold on to more than it has been because as you can tell from looking at it, it hasn't been all that easy keeping this one hydrated. Largely just because it's been overdue for a repot for a while. Well, I mean, probably like two years. Okay, that is going to make for a much happier Disso cactus. Get those clips back in and this will be good to go. This should last it for a few years. They're not plants that need to be repotted all that often. Probably a couple years ago would have been a good idea on this one. Or at least to have refreshed the soil some. On occasions I have like just tossed handfuls of soil in there when I've noticed I was having a really hard time keeping it hydrated. This was really just to a point where it needed a larger pot 
with a nice fresh blend of mix around those roots. And I'm not giving this one a soak like I am with the banana because the banana needs that systemic. This one, I don't think it needs the systemic. And even if it did, it would be getting it in a different dosage than the banana. Banana's at full strength, the cactus, so I'd probably go half strength. I don't think it needs it. The weird thing with the spider mites, right, is how particular they can be with plants. I looked over that shelf after the clip where I cut all the foliage off the no-no over there and uh, nothing. I don't see any others over there, but again, it's harder to see them over there. So when I do a full on watering tonight, I'm not gonna water all the plants on camera. It makes way too much noise. There's things get humid and steamy. It's, it's not a pleasant thing to try and film. I've tried it before, it didn't work out. But when I'm done watering, I'm gonna go through with that systemic spray that I showed y'all before and make sure to get the undersides of the leaves on everything over here on those plant shelves. I've been good about using that spray on everything from like here and over. Haven't done a ton with the shelves, just because the aeroids and I wanted to see if the, like basically how well the stuff worked and if it was too potent. I didn't want to use anything too potent on all the aeroids over there, but I haven't had any issues with it on any of the plants so far. It's bonite, so it's pretty gentle, maybe not all that effective, but so far, like the plants that I was having a lot of problems with mealybugs on, I haven't been having issues with them since I've been using the systemic. Other oh, croton's still been a problem. I think I'm just gonna have to take all the leaves off of that one. I tried the systemic thing, it's been two months and it's not doing anything. And I've been spraying with neem and with that system X, the stuff I've been talking about this whole time. They're still on the croton, but everything else, <laughs> haven't been seeing them. January, January and February is where those things tend to peak and we are just about there. Like this is the last video of the year, isn't it? I, oh my, I actually forgot Happy New Year, everybody. Probably wrap all this up before I start moving on to something else. This is not getting a soak because of the systemic like I talked about and because it's a cactus. It doesn't need it. The good watering should be good enough for it. I'll get it moved back over there to the shelves. That should be a much happier plant. And sometime in the next few weeks, this should start to set flowers. The Disso cactus have the most amazing flowers. They're small to medium sized, dainty yellow flowers. They smell. So freaking good. When this thing flowers, the entire growth space smells like cinnamon and vanilla. It's a very sweet and spicy scent. I enjoy it a lot and I look forward to when that flowers. And that was one of the reasons I was like, okay, I gotta get on top of this. This thing really needs a new container and some fresh mix because well, I want it to do its best and I've had it for a long time. It's been a trooper of a plant, but you can see from looking at it, the poor thing is just so freaking thirsty. The paddles on these should be not very plump because this isn't one that has really big plump foliage and, you, and it's not so thirsty that it's like limp, but it's on the verge of there and it's just been so hard to keep the dang thing hydrated. So that's gonna make a big difference. Banana, it's had about, I don't know, 15 minutes to soak at this point. So I'll probably lift that out, let it drain. That's gonna go back over onto the plant shelves and just have to stay on top of the neems and everything else. Neems and soaps and once a month hitting things with that system X stuff and uh making sure to get on the bottoms of the leaves and may end up having to increase the amount it's possible have to wait and see if these things are going to continue to be problems and there will be situations where you have to wonder is the stuff not working very well or is it just the type of plant that it's on there's a lot that goes into systemics they have to be one the right type the right strength and they don't work on all plants plants that have active growth usually the best way to go needs to be able to transport whatever's in it to the ends of the foliage where the insects are in order for it to do anything, right? And that is the other reason that I made sure to cut all of the foliage off of the no-no. So that the new leaves that come out, minus the one that's right there, everything else that comes out of there, it should be fairly well loaded with the systemic that's down in there. One would hope, that depends on the active growth. I wanted to move the no-no to this shelf over here because it's just better lighting and it's warmer but I think I should wait. I should give it a couple weeks, stay on top of the sprays, make sure that the trunk stays nice and clean and free of pests. I mean, I feel like if there's spider mites here, there's probably spider mites up there. Like I said, I haven't been seeing them. Now that I know that they're out here, I'm gonna have to do everything I just talked about and really just get on top of spraying things down. And I will use that water to water the plants around the banana because it has some systemic in it. Not a lot, but it's got something in there. Anyways, yeah, that's, that's all. Odds and ends, had a good time, got to see the snow. The snow is so pretty, it made me so happy. We might get more tonight. I'll be so excited if we do. Anyway, yeah, happy New Year's everyone. 
Hope you have a good one. Tomorrow's New Year's Eve, right? The day after this video comes out. I don't, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but I'm pretty sure Sunday's New Year's Eve. Hope everybody has a great time and enjoys themselves. Uh, comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's been going on in your gardens or with your house plants? I should say for most people at this point. Y'all know what's going on over here. That time of year, just pest control and repots. Anyways, all right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.